Hey, what's up guys, it's Tip. I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you guys who showed up to the Classic PvP Summit this weekend. The event was absolutely insane. And a special shout out to Kron, UHDX, Perplexity, Storm, and Tribe for breaking down vanilla PvP the way they did. If you missed the event live, don't worry about it. I'll be posting the full VODs on YouTube over the next couple of days. But right now, I have a very special clip of the event that I think a lot of you guys will really like. This clip was taken from the dueling segment of the event, and in this particular duel, we have Perplexity showing us how to take down an SL lock. Check it out. Okay, so this is against Goth. So everyone knows who Goth is and how insane Goth is as a player. So he's got his pet on the other side of the room. Um, and this is actually a meta game for something I did in the duel previously, um, which is I'm using Serenity. And I spoke about Serenity yesterday. Serenity has a chance to dispel at the target. So against a Soling Warlock, something you can do is you get the, you sap the Warlock, uh, you get the Serenity Mace, um, and you uh, you basically try and dispel Soling. So right there, because I got a sap on, on Goth, I've just used Expose Armor just because I can for free. So I'm sprinting over to the pedic because I need to gap because as fast as possible. You will see my Serenity in my main hand. And I'm basically just going to use as many skills as I can that are super cheap. So hemorrhage, faint works. Not many people know faint does that. I think Norman knows that. And you'll notice there's a little dispel animation on the pet there. So I've just dispelled Soul Link. So Goth no longer takes 30% less damage, and he's still in the sap. Um, the reason he... I vanished here to get a resap on him. The reason he puts his pet on the other side of the room is because he wants it to, he wants it to be even harder for me to dispel the Soul Link. Um, so I'm resapping him here because I want a nice clean opener. Uh, it also kind of prevents him from putting Soul Link up as well. You don't want him to reapply the buff. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to open pretty soon here. And it's going to be a really hard opener because obviously he's taking much more damage now. Because the main strength of Soul Link Warlock is you take that 30% less damage. Holy crap. <laughs> you need to... Okay, can we... I'm going to pause it just for a second, okay? Um, sure. So yep. so just uh, in case some of the people weren't here yesterday, I know, I know some people... Uh, haven't played classic uh, or vanilla at all before. Um, so just a real quick rewind. You mentioned Serenity. What is Serenity and why did you equip it? So Serenity is a mace, blacksmithing mace. Um, it's not banned on pickup, so you can have a blacksmith make it for you, but there will need to be mace crafting or whatever it is. I don't know what it's called, mace crafting? But yeah. Um, and so it's BOE um, and it has a chance to dispel the target. So that's really important because in vanilla, Soul Link is dispellable, but it's not dispellable from the Warlock himself. It, it's only dispellable from the pet. So if you have Serenity and you try to dispel the Warlock with your Serenity, it won't work. Uh, you have to dispel Soul Link from the pet. So it, it serves, serves you right as a rogue to kind of sap the guy and then get to work on his pet. And the reason you use cheap abilities is because you basically want to try and proc the main hand as much as possible. So the more abilities you use in a shorter period of time is going to reward you because you have more chance of dispelling the guy. So the main reason I'm playing Hemorrhage against him isn't just because Lock is really strong against Backstab Rogue, it's also because I have cheaper abilities. Okay, very interesting. And you mentioned Faint specifically, the Rogue ability Faint. Can you kind of explain yeah. what that is and why you used it here in particular in tandem with Serenity? So I couldn't think of a use for Faint in PvP, and like no one uses Faint in PvP whatsoever. Um, and it turns out when you use it, I used it um, when I was dueling a Priest to stack Wound Poisons to see if it stacked Wound Poisons because it was just really cheap and it put a Wound Poison on the guy. I was like, wow, cool, okay. This is, I can use this now to proc things. Um, and I think it's like 20 energy and only on a 10 second cooldown. So if you use the Faint, it won't do any damage because it's an ability that reduces threat and that's all it does. Um, but your character performs an attack that I guess counts as a special. And if any attack that counts as a special on a Rogue uh, has a chance to proc um, your main hand whatever you have on your main hand, whether it's a uh, Crusader, the, the Enchant, whether it's, you know, Serenity, whether it's, you know, like Stormling spoke about with the Shatterer, which is a weapon that um, has a chance to disarm, whether it's that, whether it's a poison, it has a chance to proc that, the Faint spell, so. So Faint, a threat-reducing ability that you would think has nothing to do with combat, can actually be used to proc your abilities, whether it be Crusader buffs, or, or you know, in this case, the Serenity dispel uh, proc, or any kind of proc on a weapon, it can be used offensively as well. Pretty much, yeah. That's really, really cool. Um, I just wanted to kind of highlight that because that, when you told me that the first time, like my mind like just exploded. Um, but let's go ahead and continue here. You're about to open up on this lock, so I'm going to continue the clip right now. Yep, so I've just propped prep because I need my cooldowns back. So right here, I'm going to open pretty early because there's a chance from heartbeat duration that my sap breaks and I don't want him to get a soul link off. So I'm going to stun him here. Um, and my, my job here is just do as much damage as possible. If I can kill him here in the stun lock, that's essentially what I want. 
And against a lower geared Warlock, you're going to pretty much do that if you dispel the Soling. But against a lock that's geared in AQ gear and has rank uh, rank 13 gear like uh, like Goth has, um, you're going to need multiple rotations and multiple outplays to kill the guy. Like I'm I'm hitting him hard here, but he's going to escape the kidney shot before I kill him. So I vanish and I summon a pet. And the reason I do that is because I want him to death coil the pet. The pet gives him an instant target, and the vanish protects me from death coil. So if he if he death coils right away, I'll vanish it. If he death coils like 200 milliseconds after I vanish, he will coil the pet because the pet gives him an instant target. And then right here, he wants to title me, so I'm going to use my Shadow Reflector just as he gets out of it. If I use my Shadow Reflector before he gets out of the stun, he won't title me because he, he does it's a waste. But if I use it just after he gets out of the stun and I, my timing's correct, then I get to use my Shadow Reflector when he titles and he gains nothing from the title. Um, so right there, I've, I've wasted that for him now. And he, he what, right, what he wants to do right now is he wants to... Uh, he wants to he wants to stop me from blinding him. So he's gonna pop his skull of impending doom and he's gonna coil me. And because I'm close to him, I read that he's gonna coil me and I gouge it. So again, he's got no pressure here. Uh, or very little pressure. It's much less because I did that. Now he wants to get his, as many spells up on me as possible. Like I'm winning this fight massively at this point. So he wants to fell on right here. So he sacrifices his pet and he's gonna fell on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clutch with foresight because I'm on global, so I can't kick him. Um, and because I can't kick him, he sees that I can't kick him, so I use clutch of foresight to interrupt his fell so he thought he was safe to fell them, but I clutch a foresight, which is a, uh, an item that allows you to interrupt spells. So now he's now he's panicking. You know, he's really shitting himself now. He's using whatever he can to get as much damage off as possible, and he's just going to take a blind now because he has nothing to counter. He's got no skull. Um, I've only got one more sacrifice to deal with, um, and that's it. You know, I've I've countered fell them, essentially. But the thing is with Feldom, though, is it has a duration, right? So he wants to use Feldom right here. Um, you can see it under his legs. His, his feet are kind of glowing. Oh, they've stopped glowing now. So Feldom... Oh, no, no, they're still glowing somewhat. Yeah, there's a little pulse from under his feet. He still has Feldom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait him into using Feldom by letting him out of the blind, like I do here, and then sapping him just before he gets the pet summon from his Feldom. So this basically wastes his Feldom because now it's going to fall off and he won't have Feldom anymore. Um, and he's just going to die now, so yeah. Uh, I think that's it anyway. I think that's pretty much the end. What I do is I drop combat and I swap my trinkets now to the Maelstrom trinket and the uh, Heart of Wormphalak, which is just damage trinkets, to maximize the amount of damage I do. And they are both uh, they both deal spell damage, uh, elemental damage essentially, so I ignore any form of armor he has, so it will do more damage. So yeah, still watching the jewel here. That, I mean, he's just going to die. Like He can't do anything now. He's got no coil. He's got nothing to stop any form of CC. He has no outs, he has nothing to stop my damage, no more sacrifices left, and regardless of what he does, even with the Shadow Burn, like he almost kills me. This is the power of obviously a high gear warlock. Um, he's just gonna drop, which is what he does. So he's dra he's draining me because he's desperate now. He this is his, his his last option. I'm just gonna eviscerate him and kill him. So uh, you have to go to like so much extent to kill a warlock. And I, I'm, really pretty, I'm pretty happy with that jewel. I thought I thought yeah, vanilla really PvP. Good. I thought vanilla PvP didn't require any skill at all. Oh man. Yeah, I thought so too. Dang <laughs> <laughs> it. I see a lot of people insist that the vanilla skill cap was low. I hope videos like this and the rest of the classic PvP summit helps disprove that myth once and for all. But thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. A special thank you to all of my patrons who helped make the summit possible. So much time and effort went into the event behind the scenes, and I want you guys to know that without your support, I wouldn't have been able to do it. If you'd like to support awesome community events like this yourself, I've left my Patreon link in the description below for you. A final shout out to Perplexity before we go for that awesome commentary, but have a wonderful day, fellas. And as always, tips out, baby!